quorum. Um, and uh, that's okay. We can talk about that. It's later in the agenda. Even Christine is not here. She is very punctual. Yeah. yeah. Summer is always tough for this meeting. Yeah. Um, so anyway, there's three of us here and, uh, and, and staff. Um, what I did, if you, if we can skip ahead to, uh, reports of, mem let's see, uh, committee structure, membership and quorums, 5D, just skip ahead since we're, <laughs> we're right. Um, I did talk with a town clerk about, uh, what can we do, uh, to make it easier to get a quorum because we have nine members, two in the planning zoning commission, one attends. One doesn't. Two from the council. One attends, and one doesn't. Well, now they don't even have PZ. Doesn't even have a rep. That's right. Yeah. So, um, if you know, I explored with her the option we had talked about last meeting. One was trying to get the committee on committees to say, okay, one member from PCC and one member from the council, and then we would only need four people for a quorum, as opposed to now we would need five. Um, and she said, well, um, the Committee on Committees was meeting sometime this month, and I don't remember. They normally meet today, but they, they post, canceled it, right, Sam? Yeah, it was going to be today. We didn't have much of an agenda. I'm actually uh, uh, on vacation, but I wanted to make sure that I was part of this. I missed the April one by accident. Yeah, well, so I had a chair. Who's the chair of Committee on Committees? You or? Yeah, it's me again. Okay. Well, when I talked with uh, Sarah Ann about uh, what we could do about our quorum difficulty, she thought that the easiest thing to do would be to have instead of what we we had talked at the meeting about a floating, you know, that the council members wouldn't necessarily count as a okay. member if they weren't here, so that the quorum could be less. Same with planning zones. She thought it would be better to have your committee on committees just make one representative from each planning from planning zoning and the council. Um, if you could do that politically, I know that's, <laughs> <pretty> more, <laughs> that's what I was thinking. Is it may be we got a new uh, town council member um, on Monday the tenth. And I don't know if he has any interest in, in being part of the transportation, you know, this committee. Um, if he does, then it may be a little bit more difficult to make that kind of a change. But if he doesn't, then I think it could be something that is uh, discussed. Typically, you know, Republicans and Democrats both want to have a seat at the table in case they want to have a voice. But I see what I, I mean, I've been coming to these meetings and I, John, I've told you before, I thought there was only just me assigned to it and there's supposed to be an, 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 another one of us here. So. Yeah, He's that's something we can. And if it and if it's something that we get pushed back from the other town council members, uh, you know, from any side, um, we can always talk to the mayor about like, OK, well, can you please have a conversation with whoever's supposed to else be here? Right making sure that they participate because, you know, we get to our town council meetings and there's just a lot of push in terms of, I, I don't know if John, you've talked about this uh, or, or seen this, but we're really pushing to have um, more, more money and, and more staff available for the streets. Yeah. And there's definitely, um, the, the people who are voting yes, they're they're wanting to make sure that um, it's not just going to making, you know, and I'm not saying this is happening, but this is the mentality of, they don't want it to be a, 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 a Autobahn. They want it to be a complete streets kind of a um, feel. And I, and I don't know if this is on anybody's radar, but I know in the charge that we passed, uh, the Committee on Committees passed last October, you know, we asked, uh, uh, that there be a, a, a yearly um, presentation a, update, yeah, uh, to the town council, and I think that we're getting to a point where that might be good to have before the budget season, because John, I honestly think we could get you that 
that last person to get you another crew. And I, I, and I'm not, I have that. I have, you gave it to me. Sorry? You gave it to me le this last budget, so. Oh, I thought it got taken away. No, I have a full crew. But I'm saying you have you have an odd number right now. Don't you have two and you need another one to have another crew? No, I, I'm pretty sure we got it. Okay. <laughs> We're operating with three, so. Okay. You would know better than I. I'm just making sure that you have what you need. And, um, but a big part of the support for, for all of this in, in not only, you know, getting caught up from the, the lack of attention that uh, the roads have been given, that support is coming with the caveat that they want to make sure that it's a, a, like a complete streets that this committee signs off on. And because of the charge that we just, you know, passed, uh, like I said, back in October, they, they want to, you know, other count, town council members definitely want to make sure that it's, you know, being as consistent as much as, uh, not consistent, but as in following the complete streets, suggestions, policies, however you want to put it. And I know that there's definitely a, a, a big financial hurdle to, to certain streets. John, you presented that with like the, the boulders or the, the narrow streets and things like that. But I think that even if this committee through the staff identifies sections that can be done, I think it's better than, than nothing. I, I don't know. And I, I, I'm sorry to, to talk so much. I just I, um, that's part of uh, what we added to the agenda in 4B, uh, 4B2. Um, right. So we'll, we, let's morph to that. But um, the other thing, if the politics makes it too difficult to make it one from council and one from planning and zoning, the other idea that came up I think Christine brought it up, is to have them on the committee, but not penalize us when they're not here so that we could have a quorum of four instead of five. And I presume that that could be done in somehow in the charge or 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 how the membership is, is yeah. spelled out. I but, wonder I wonder if the town council members' votes can be even split in half so it's just one vote. Or something like that. Well, that I had that, that I haven't thought of that before. But again, it, it just seems to me if if it's a controversial thing and both parties want to weigh in, um, then they can be here and count as a member and count as a full vote. But if they don't come, then they don't count as having to have a quorum. So I'm I don't sure. know how you word that exactly. But it sounds like it could be done. Uh, it would take a little wordsmithing to, to yeah. make it uh, realistic. But that way we could get by with four. It wouldn't help us in this meeting, <laughs> but it would help in most meetings where we had yeah. four instead of uh, needing five. I like that idea. Um, and I, I, don't think, I don't think we'll have, if we have a problem with it just being one from planning and zoning and from town council, then I don't think that there'll be an issue with having it uh, so that we word it in such a way that it won't count against the, the, the yeah. committee. That'll be, that'll be fun. Committees without council representation too? Like, I don't think SWAC has any right. counselors on it. So Right, there definitely are some. So, I mean, that's another way around it. Say you're always welcome to come as a counselor. Right. You don't get the vote and that way, because I know planning zoning has difficult time getting anybody to want to be on this committee. I don't know why, but they did. Yeah. yeah and, and it's, it's interesting because I have had heated discussions and, and um, as you can tell from some of the diatribe, I'm sorry, that, like I said, that I carried on, but there's a lot of passion. It just, I, and I was thinking, uh, you know, there was discussion of creating a, 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 a like a, a special group just to just to kind of you know go through some of this stuff and and then ultimately correctly i think it was pointed out that that's what this is what the tac does so yeah all right so 
I'm in favor of whatever you think will work best and yeah. I'll make it well, happen. What, what I would suggest is um, making some alternative wording, running that to Sarah and let her wordsmith it, and then you know, ship it to you and have your committee consider it and then uh, see where it goes. We're and gonna, I, I would like to just run it at least by you or the other members to make sure that it's, before I go off and, and bring it to the town council or even the committee on committees, I yeah. don't wanna, I don't wanna, I, I'm sure I am, am interpreting what you're saying correctly, but just in case, I just like to have your sign off on it the committee sign off on it however you want to play that but i'm in favor of reducing it down to one per body planning and zoning town council and if we get pushback from anywhere then we'll deal with it at that point in terms of uh removing the count against the quorum right okay so let's let's morph back to the discussion of the whole complete streets thing uh, it, you know, it has been my opinion and, and talking to some of the other bicyclists in Bike Mansfield that some of the work that's being done on the roads is clearly just for cars. Um, a perfect example of that is the edge stripes that have recently been put on, put on some of the roads. For, they call them fog stripes, edge stripes, whatever. Um, Clearly, that doesn't do anything for a pedestrian. It does nothing for a bicyclist, and particularly if there's no shoulder at all. It's just for cars, who, particularly at night, so they can tell where the edge of the road is. Um, so that's one of the things that you know bugs me in that the consciousness of the people who are taking care of the roads and doing the striping and putting in the guardrails doesn't seem to consider pedestrians and bicyclists because the guardrails end up right next to the road and make it that makes it harder to both bike and pedestrian uh, bike or walk and the uh, edge stripes are are adding the edge stripes were directed by council they we, were we did not want to put them for that reason we think it that's your fault <laughs> not uh, well i i can tell you that there was definitely push to have the edge stripes so that there was a clear distinction as to if somebody was walking uh where you know, to try to provide the guidance to the to the cars but i i think if i'm if i'm remembering i don't remember pushing for it but if i remember correctly who was the thinking was is that we would provide enough room for pedestrians i i'm not sure maybe that's what they were thinking i, I can't speak for well, that is we came back with there's studies out there that now you've defined a left and right limit for a car and they're going to go fast and, and so we didn't want to do it but we were so the stripes are right there's no shoulder the stripes are right on the shoulder because the roads are too narrow to, to put if if it was a you know if you had a 12 foot lane width i mean you know 12 foot pavement on the side you could put it three feet from the curb and that would give you a little bit of respite with a nine foot lane, but they're too narrow. The roads are 18 feet, 19 feet. And so when you put the stripe at the edge of the road, that's the best you can do. Well, Derek and I were trying to not do it. No, I so wasn't. I would definitely bring that up in the annual report because I think that there's confusion by some of my colleagues as to how helpful those lines are even on a 18 foot wide road. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I'm talking about myself and some of my acquaintances. Uh, the best way to do that would be to get, you know, more input from other people that use the roads, walkers and bicyclists so that you know, we're, we're not necessarily just listening to the loudest person, that's all. Well, and I think that it's, I, I however you think that you want to present information, even if it's, you know, primarily from firsthand experience, I think that, it, it, you know, 
any other voice or really the, the town council members really would, I think, value and appreciate input from this committee at this juncture, at least in terms of as we let up, lead up to the, the next budget cycle, because um, I, I don't know, I, I don't put it outside the realm that john you could get another crew I, I don't know I mean <laughs> there's just this push to have and it's from both sides uh more of an emphasis on the streets and i don't want this push to drive john and his staff to get it done and then not have input from someone like yourself right. who can kind of provide another another perspective okay well we should put that on the next agenda when we you know we'll have hopefully have a quorum and i'll bring it up at bike mansfield's next meeting nice and i'll ask people what they think and uh we could even we have a, a mailing list of about 160 or 170 cyclists we could even uh send out and ask people to comment on yep. what they think about some of that stuff and um and then we report that at, from bike mansfield to this committee or where or whatever they, yeah or, and or, I, they can do that in writing or they can come and talk at the, the the town council meeting um i think the next one will be july 28th if i'm correct 24th 24th, yes, thank you. <laughs> okay. one, of, one of the concerns I have is, is it, are we building the, the road for a recreational cyclist or a commuter cyclist? Because the complete street is, to me, is more for a commuter cyclist. Yeah. Than yeah. The guy who wants to go out and ride 25 miles an hour, I'm never going to satisfy him with the road. Right. Was, right, right, right. That's the, that, I mean, we're trying to get at least up here where it's a little more urban. You know, in the stores there, you get the complete loop around campus and then get the Maple Road you know, where you can ride on a multi-use path and you can get to work and get to school and get to the middle school. Right, right. Yeah. I right. think you're doing a great, I think you and your staff are both all doing a great job, John. I don't mean to make it sound like, I, I think that you're getting too many voices. Um, Quite or, trying to and I and I and I that's why I think that a presentation from uh Yulon just you know after you've gone through the the quorum of this committee and, and figured out what exactly everyone agrees to to emphasize will will be beneficial as we okay well I'm actually very glad to hear that John and Derek were not responsible for the edge drives <laughs> because that was uh, something I thought. Jeez, I we meet started. we meet with these guys all the time, and then <laughs> they're doing this. When but, I started, I came up in a council meeting. I think, what can you do? Can yeah. you paint stripes? I, I said, yeah, if you want to, we can paint stripes. They gave us thirty thousand dollars, and we did a little more research. And it's like, no, this is on yeah. some of these roads. We're going to make it so a car feels safer and goes faster. And yeah, like I see it all over Cape Cod, where the white line is like on the grass yeah <laughs> right right <laughs> all right okay let's let's move on um we can't approve the uh april 13th minutes no quorum older business i haven't been in town i have not talked to uh philip about transit updates so i can't i i can't give you anything on that as far as the complete streets planning implementation we already talked about the second point in here um john is there anything that you know you that we can support all of them i think the ones that we can't support or that i know what a town won't support is the downtown ones i think the partner i know the partnership would be against it you know so those are the ones that would be more difficult because when we designed it built it the sidewalk was supposed to be the you know, yeah bike friendly area right I know that's not ideal for some people, but if you're commuting to work, I mean, that's an option. But right, right. That, I mean, it doesn't mean it can't happen. I, the dog lane closing, that part we support. We've been, I've been talking that for a while. But the, the Royce Circle and the World Crossways. Well, the other thing was 
possibly changing the parking on Wilbur Cross Way, not yeah, back in. not doing anything, just you know, make it so you 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 back in instead of pulling. I think that that's go through the partnership board to see how they support it. I mean, they don't want to lose any parking spaces. That doesn't lose. Them. Yeah, no, there wouldn't. But anything that would lose parking spaces there. All right. Because there's supposedly there's some businesses coming back in, so parking. Yeah, I, I just saw an article. There's five. Something for Gino, something for Grill 86, something for the old 7 Eleven, and a couple others. So there, there are five that are on the, on the docket coming in. All right. Well, you know, what I should do on the, on the, on the reverse angle parking is I will get, uh, I'll get some pictures uh, of what they do in New Britain and I'll, I'll bring them in to uh, you and Cynthia and, uh, and ask her to uh, talk to the downtown partnership about that. So at, the, at least we're, we're making some progress towards something. So isn't it towards parking or talking about something like what we have in front of Kathmandu? Yeah, except you back in. Except you back in instead of. Yeah, instead of angling them towards the traffic, you angle them towards the back of the traffic. And then you go by the spot and back in. And that's safer for bicyclists because then you don't have cars backing out. I like that. They pull out. So they should see you in theory. Yeah. Because they're on the driver's side and you're looking that way to pull out. So you can yeah. see if a bike's there. Or if yeah. you're backing up, you're, yeah. and you're yeah. not going to see right. The, right. the cyclists. Right. So, um, I'll see about getting some pictures. No, I, I like it. I just know the partnership is. Yeah, well, we'll have to go. We'll, we'll have to float. And, you know, one of the things I found when I was working here is nobody wants to do something right away. But if you give them information and then come back a few months later, then maybe you can. All right. All right. So then uh, what else do we talk about here today? Um, the draft master plan for the bicycle and pedestrian plan for the town. Um, I did, uh, uh, we met again with the Parks and Natural Resources Committee. They came up with a whole nother set of recommendations after they had already approved it. <laughs> but they said, but, you know, uh, and so we took those and I met with uh, John Hankins and we, we worked out how to put those things into the plan. And now Derek and I just have to sit down and change some wordings and, and a chart or two. And so that should be uh, finished, you know, this summer. And we should then be able to, to go from there to uh, council and, uh, and PCC. But um, it's in the middle of the summer and he was on vacation and then I was gone and so, Hopefully in the next couple of weeks we can get together. Back until he goes on vacation in August, mid August. But it's uh, I it's not a lot of. No, I mean, I'm just saying it's like two okay. two hours worth. If you hit him next week or the week after, yeah. the week after. Yeah. Okay. Next three weeks. Uh, anything new on current transportation projects? Well, we did pave Browns. That was, you know, we did all the drainage last year, but we ran out of time to pave it. And Davis, Felon, and Monticello. And I've seen more people out walking and biking on Davis than I've ever seen before. Maybe it's just because I'm on Davis more, but it just seems like people appreciate the new pavement, feel safer. Right. There's no striping on it yet. But... Do uh, this the uh, WRTD give some kind of a number or some kind of volume that how much uh, the uh, Public transportation being utilized. Public transportation? Yeah. I, I, I don't have those. WRTD would have said. Say no, I'm talking about public transportation, uh, that buses that uh, run. Yeah. So I just want to know what is the uh, efficiency means, uh, uh, how, how much it is being utilized. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I can ask Philip uh, for, for an update on uh, utilization. Uh, 
I just had I didn't have an opportunity to talk to him before this meeting, but I I will do that. We're working on uh, an, an area that I learned was called Mansfield Heights, which is Thomas Timber and Sumner Drive up on northern Mansfield, up by Four Corners. Yeah, right. So we're doing a drainage there that should get paved in the the paving season, and we're also working on Mulberry and Olson and drainage and repaving that. We have four bridges that have been approved for 100% funding by the state and feds. And those are Atwoodville, Curlyville, Juniper, and Old Turnpike. So it'll be 100% funded. The town will just have to float money to pay, but we'll get reimbursed for it. So it's so a bridge project. So they're just going to be starting design sometime yeah, just, soon. They're yeah. just taking traffic count. Right. So right. And the Gurleyville one, I presume, will straighten that just a little bit. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, there'll be public hearings and all that. Yeah. Right. Make it so you can walk over it, bike over it. I'm sure it'll look as nice as the the ones you did when you were here. What um I old term bike is is just a little yeah. What are they going to do to Juniper? Are they going to try to raise like raise the bridge a little bit, make it wider? I mean, that's the residents hate that they have to like kind of wait one day. It's oh, wide okay. enough for two, but they're not comfortable with it. Right. Juniper. I hope raise it. Juniper is the one eighty nine. It's yeah, off eighty nine. Uh, yeah. Brookside it goes way down. Yeah. From it's both it's sides. got a, two entrances, which I'm hoping they can look at one. Maybe the sight lines work. Maybe we'll see. I mean, it's yeah. There'll be a whole public hearings and people so, get yeah. their input, but it's, it's a good thing. It's all 100% right. funded. Usually it was 80, 20, but the state's covering the yeah. 20. Right. And one that's of our great, old- That's great people. work. What's that? That's great work getting those funded like that. And those bridges I think are uh, good selections. One of our old interns works at a firm that's into it and he contacted us today. Hey, did you know about this? Okay. It's kind of a secret, but not everybody knows about it. Yeah, that's great. There's also one between, I think it's the one on our Coventry Road and Coventry's Depot Road. That one's getting replaced, but Coventry has to put that in because I guess they technically owned it. Yeah. Okay. So that's another one. Um, while you're talking about, what's the latest on the South Eagle Road? You, they that's, were doing this. Yeah, this. we're we have a consultant, Weston and Sampson, is uh, designing the. The boulevard complete street with a you know a wider trail on the southern side and they're also doing the sewage line for the the apartments that are going in we're looking they're going to design a roundabout we don't have the funding for a roundabout but at least we'll get a number and see if the states supports a roundabout right the one at, at maple at maple yeah but it's not it hasn't been there's no funding for it. Yeah, under, understood. But if we get everybody excited about it, maybe the council will come up with some money. They, I don't know. Right. I'd love that. Are we still talking about putting a light in at, uh, was it Separatist? Yeah, the state. I haven't heard back from that. I mean, we did get the RRFBs on uh, 195. That was a state project that took a lot longer than it should have. So Separatist light is taking a lot longer than it should. But anything with the state seems like if you get anything in three or four years, you're you're on time when I don't see why it takes so long. But like we're also dealing with the downtown loop closure. That's to get the separatists connected to North Eagleville with a multi-use trail and also to get separatists to Maple. Maple yeah. Connected. Yeah. That's we're almost there where it's ready to go as far as and then we still have Maple, which we've hired. One of my engineers has been out for six months, so we hired Wes and Samson to help design that. Okay, good, good. Um, I think there's one other one I was just thinking about. Oh, is there any chance that the Four Corners development is going to build the path from Four Corners up to the development? I think, yeah, from Four Corners M, I think there is good, maybe not a path, but sidewalk. I'm not sure what. There is bike lanes going to be put on 195. Though. Okay. Um, 
but the connection for pedestrians and bicycles from four corners up to the new development that's you know that's what up to the stand for the 207 or up to yukon no 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 not the yukon one uh to from the development that's now yeah. being done there, yes there'll be a connection to four corners yeah. yes it's going to be a sidewalk and a bike okay. lane will be on there. yeah okay we that's, looked at applying great. for a safe streets for all for two roundabouts at 320 and four corners but the state was like too wishy-washy on yeah. They were they were kind of afraid to do it. Yeah. And I'm like, it's a single lane coming in, so it can be a single lane roundabout. Yeah. The only reason it's five lanes now is for the traffic load. But right. You go out half a mile and all the roads are a single lane coming right. in. Right. Right. Yeah, it's interesting because uh up at the Cape where I just came from, um, there's a new roundabout going at, at a an intersection. They've been working on it and it's finally, you know. Functional. I love them up there. There's so many that yeah. Yeah. I, I hate stopping for lights and nobody's there. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, we talked about committee structure, other business. I mean, we don't have a quorum, but I'm anybody want, want to talk about anything else? No, I just uh just want to make sure I have my marching orders in, in place regarding the committee structure and um Membership and wording. Yeah, we're going to draft some wording. Perfect. Give it to you for your committee. And we will run that by the town clerk before you get it. Awesome. And then you can do with it whatever you feel fit. Okay. Yep. Is right. there anything else you need for me in terms of, you know, at the town council level or anything else? I really view you guys as the experts and everything. I'm just I'm just here to try to be as supportive as I can be. Well, the one the one thing that will be coming soon is the the transportation or the uh, master plan for bikes and pedestrians. Yeah. So you can help uh, move that forward. I presume they're going to need a public hearing, and then <clears throat> there'll be some discussion. Um, we can certainly come and. We meaning Derek and I, who did most of the revisions, we can make a presentation, and uh, um, you know it'd be nice to get that adopted. It, there's nothing really magical about it. It just talks about some of the things that are already being done, and to elevate the consciousness that you just spoke of, of you know trying to have the roads serve everybody, and, and more and more lines. <laughs> More five lines. <laughs> well, but that would be, you know, that's coming. So if you okay, that's good to know. I'll bring that up at the next town council meeting. That you know that that'll be something to expect within you know some period of time. But yes, that'd like be you, I find that what you said is accurate. Where you feed a little bit of information and then you move on it a little bit later. Let them kind of marinate in it and answer questions and 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 hear. You know, I mean, a perfect example of that was the Parks and Recreation Committee. When they reviewed it, they reviewed it kind of at a meeting, and then they went ahead and said, okay, we, we, we're for it. And then the next meeting, they sort of retracted their thing and said, well, actually, we have all these things, because they had a month, a month or two to think about it. And then it just proves what John and I have learned all through working here is that you just can't ram things through. You have to give everybody a chance to kind of get easy with it. So Absolutely. not just here, everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yep. All right. Well, the next meeting, as we have determined, is the second week in September. Uh, October. It's the quarterly, right? So October is the first. Yeah, you're right. So let's see what what that will be. It will be October 12th. Yeah, it's already on my calendar. So you're right, October 12th. All right, so we'll be adjourned at 740 or 641. Okay, uh, long, you can.